You ever heard the term of playing God? It's a term used when we as humans behave in a way that makes us all powerful. And really what can give us that feeling more than creating life itself? I'm not talking about creating a simple computer program or having a child. No, no, I'm talking about being the direct reason for a unique new mind to blossom, a new creature to take form, and for two animals that generally shouldn't do the dirty to do the dirty. We're kind of sick people, aren't we? That brings us to today's topic. We are going to be exploring some animals that were a direct result of man's interference. With all that said and done, let's begin, shall we? Our first abomination is the human-pig hybrid. Starting this list with an abomination, eh? Oh, good job, me. This is the biggest definition of playing God, mixing our own relative human genes with that of a simple pig. This horrifying, totally not going to result in a horror movie situation was successfully created by a team of scientists in the US. They described this project as being an interspecies chimera, and honestly, I couldn't agree more. This horrifying creature was created by injecting human stem cells into early pig embryos and then transferred into sows. They then developed past the first trimester and actually did develop into living, breathing pigs, and actually not that horrifying as I'm letting on. They pretty much looked like regular pigs, organs and all, but they did have a few human cells floating around in them. So, what was the point here if it's still just a friggin' pig? Well, despite the idea being a little ew, the intention is good. They're hoping that with more development and testing that they can create pigs that have organs that are fully compatible with our own. Just think of it, how long is the wait list for a new heart? I mean, really, how long will little Timmy last if he doesn't get that new liver in a few years? Well, that wouldn't be a problem anymore if this project does in fact reach its goal. Our next entry is the spider goat. Much like the pig hybrids, this goat is still just a goat, physically at least. So to answer those questions that I very kindly asked, the who is one Freckles the goat? Freckles, for all intents and purposes, seems like a perfectly normal billy goat. Despite that though, Freckles does have a rather large and scary inside secret. She's also part spider. Yeah, I actually don't really want to imagine what the process of that one was like. Though I'm going to talk about it anyway. Yes, a professor named Randy Lewis had the genius idea to create a spider goat hybrid. Why? Quite a few reasons, actually. Randy is a farmer and a professor, so mixing the two ideas was inevitable. Randy has an interest in spider silk as it has many useful properties and can even be as strong as Kevlar. Randy took the portion of DNA of an orb weaver spider that produces silk and imprinted it into a goat embryo, who successfully gave birth to the healthy freckles. Now, instead of just lactating goat milk, freckles instead pumps out the protein found in spider silk. Randy then takes the milk out and filters out the proteins, keeping the spider silk itself. Randy's modus operandi here is hoping to keep cultivating the goat silk for uses in clothing, as well as surgical operations involving ligament repair. So again, a little less morally questionable than our first entry, but honestly just as cool. Oh wait, up uh, to where? Um, Utah University? When? Um, I don't know. Why again? Well, it's pretty neat. There you go. Our next entry is the Liger and the Tygon. A double pack for you today, we all know about the first one, either from us googling it ourselves as kids because we always thought it'd be cool to combine stuff, or from Napoleon Dynamite. Arguably the most popular animal hybrid, the Liger is what happens when you get a male lion and a female tiger to mate. You will never see a Liger in the wild, as they're only found via zoo breeding programs. This fact is mainly due to lions and tigers being located in entirely different regions, and more than likely would act hostile to one another for territory if they met. The liger possesses the features of both parents, possessing mostly the coloration of the lion but markings of the tiger. Ligers tend to be larger than either of their parents, however, with the average liger coming in at 900 pounds. This is nearly twice the weight of the average male lion and over three times the average weight of the tigress. This growth is referred to as growth dysplasia, which is a result of certain genes interfering with natural growth. Now, then there's the Tygon. I put these two together since they are basically the same concept, just different genders of parents. Whereas the Liger is a result of a male lion and a female tiger, the Tygon is the result of a male tiger and a female lion. The Tygon is very similar, however there are a few key differences. 
For starters, Tigons are either smaller than, or they're about the same size and weight of their parents, often weighing only about 400 pounds, which pales to the Liger's 900. Another key difference is that Ligers are sterile, and for the most part, Tigons are as well. But in special cases, female Tigons can conceive children. One notable example was a female Tigon named Rudrani, who successfully bred with a male lion and conceived several cubs. Given that the father was a lion and the mother was a Tigon, these new cubs were classified as Latigons. Now, the breeding of both Ligers and Tigons is viewed less than favorably, especially for Ligers as they're heavily prone to birth defects that can either hinder them for the rest of their lives or even result in an early death, as well as they're prone to obesity due to their growth. Now it's time for today's best pick. Today's best pick is a... Watermelon Rhino thing? Okay, yeah, this is clearly photoshopped. But hey, still looks pretty cool. Sure, melon rhinos may not be a thing, but don't you worry that pretty little head of yours. I have other horned animals that may be just as cool. No pushing or shoving, you'll all get to see what I present to you next with... The Beefalo. Yeah, I'll be honest, this sounds more like a specialty meal from your local McBurger Jack Jr., but it actually is a bona fide chimera. In fact, it's actually the most common crossbreed in the entire world. Despite that, his name is actually fairly recent, being coined by the founder of the World Beefalo Association, Cory Skwarinek. This name was a way to separate the beefalo from problems associated with older breeding attempts. The beefalo was created when common cows and wild bison mated in the wild, before being intentionally crossbred in the 19th century. The result was a bovine that was better adapted to its environment, as well as having a high resistance to common disease, higher fertility rate, and also had a tendency to wander off a little less. Oh, and the best part for the carnivores like me? Its meat is lower in fat and much lower in cholesterol than a common cow. Now, I mentioned that this is the most common crossbreed, and I really wasn't kidding. In fact, you know bison. Well, most bison nowadays have cattle DNA within them, with reportedly there only being about four herds that are still pure bisons left. While this doesn't totally make them beefalo, it still makes them impure bisons, and having some of the same adaptations as the hardy beefalo. In fact, they're actually more classified as cattalo, which is a bovine that has the appearance of a bison but the genetics of cattle. Before we move on, do me a favor. My analytics show that only about 15% of you watching are actually subscribed. Come on guys, what's up with that? Can you guys please hit the subscribe button? You guys watch my videos every day anyway, so you might as well subscribe and keep up to date with every video we put out. Our final entry for the day is... The Growler Bear. Also called the Pizzly Bear. <laughs> I said bear. The Groller Bear is the result of a grizzly bear and polar bear mating. There's been several suspected sightings of this hybrid in the wild, but only a few confirmed cases. While it's certainly rarer, it is possible that a grizzly and a polar bear have crossed paths, as they do occupy close regions, making it more believable that a grizz and a polar could mate. In fact, with shifting climates and temperatures, Groller Bears have a chance to become more common as both species migrate to different overlapping regions. The physical characteristics of the Groller Bear aren't very consistent, as they don't seem to retain one repeating trait from their parents. This means that most Groller Bears are kind of different in most ways. For instance, one Groller Bear could have a whiter coat like a Polar Bear, but the other could have a more brownish coat like a Grizzly Bear. Or one could inherit a Grizzly's shorter snout, while the other has a longer neck like the Polar Bear. However, it has been proven that Growlers are naturally fertile, rather than being sterile like many other Chimeras. Now, the man-made part here is a little sketchy, as I mentioned before, this can be common in the wild. However, there are zoos that have put bears in the same enclosure, allowing them to breed at their own speed and produce their mixed offspring. And of course, you have bears for science studies reproducing. So, this is more of an accidental man-made animal rather than intentional. I suppose it's more of a lazy yet happy accident, really. Now, I mentioned that there are no repeating characteristics of roller bears, but here are some of the characteristics that we've seen in captivity. Most of them have been smaller than polar bears, yet bigger than grizzlies, having long necks like the polar bears, but very broad shoulders like grizzlies, and their paws can be insulated like the hair with a polar bear. Observed behavior of captive growlers pinned them closer to the polar bear's genes, as they played with toys in a similar way, as well as hurling bags of ice, a move commonly used by the polar bear on prey and laying like the polar bear when it rests. All the power of the grizzly bear combined with the power of the polar. Absolutely terrifying. 
And that is our video for today, everybody. Tell me which was your favorite hybrid. Did we miss any big ones that aren't dogs? Let us know in the comments below. And with all that said and done, that is our video for today, and I'll see you all next time. Later, everybody.